Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch and today we are talking about Rider. Now first I want to point something out before I move on from this graphic, that asterisk. That asterisk is doing some heavy lifting here because Rider has a free version now. Rider is not free and we're going to discuss exactly what that means. By the way, this video is brought to you by Camtasia and being made in Camtasia. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see how exactly that happened. Alright, so Rider itself, we're going to do a bit of a magic trick here. I'm on Rider's homepage uh, today and tomorrow is when this news is coming out. So what we're looking at quickly here is Rider itself. So why do I like Rider? Well, Rider comes from a company called JetBrains. They make the uh, WebStorm, IntelliJ, RubyMine. Uh, they have a Rust IDE. Basically, if there's a programming language out there, they make an IDE for it. It's pretty staggering just how many IDEs these people make. And so they've got something for every single programming language you could ever imagine. And they did one more for C Sharp. And that's where Rider came from. It is a .NET IDE. But the thing is, then they kind of morphed it. And they instead said, no, uh, instead of focusing on .NET, we're going to make this the Unity IDE. And then, ah, oh, screw it. Let's throw in some Unreal Engine as well. All right, so we're going to need some C++ for that. All right, let's add that in. So we have Unreal Engine, we have Unity, we have custom C++, and we've got Godot as well. So you can think of the Rider IDE as JetBrains' solution for game developers. It's cross-platform, available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and now the part with the time travel. So again, I am technically yesterday. We're going to go take a look at the pricing on their page. Page, and you're going to see one of the major flaws with Rider is Rider is simply not available for free. And if you want to check it out or you want to evaluate it, there is a, um, a demo available, a time-limited demo. But it's kind of hard to really evaluate over a demo. Plus, if you're just um, starting out, you want to learn new tools, you're going to go with the free options. Things like uh, Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio, the full version, because you can. Uh, so here now, if you uh, notice here, you've got the, the cheapest version of Rider, uh, 150 bucks over the first year, then each additional year it gets a little bit cheaper. Yes, it is subscription-based. Uh, but now we're going to fast forward to, well, today. All right, so let's fire up the DeLorean, head forward in time to, well, today. And what you're going to find is you go to the Rider page, you will now see free for non-commercial use up here. More importantly, if you go to the pricing page, you will now see this. There is a free category here now. You can now use the IDE for a non-commercial development. Now, that's actually more flexible than non-commercial licenses normally are. So, for example, if you're using it to create tutorials or you're using it, obviously, for learning, even if you're ultimately getting paid to use it, but if you're not using it to create a product product, an internal developed tool for like your corporation or business, or something that you are selling for fee, you can use it for free. So if you're using it for open source or for tutorial creation, that kind of stuff, it applies under this non-commercial license. We'll get to an explicit example in just a second. So you can see here, uh, free for uh, learning, self-education, content creation, open source, and hobby development. Uh, it's compatible with the AI system, support through public forums and a bug tracker, and then the gotcha. There is anonymous telemetry, just like what you get with the uh, out-of-the-box version of Visual Studio Code. And you cannot opt out of the telemetry with the free version. So if you're really anti-telemetry, you're going to want to spend the money. That's kind of just one of the cautious for this. They did release a blog post around this. It's also interesting to note this also applies to WebStorm. Now, WebStorm is their JavaScript TypeScript web-based IDE. It's actually, that was my introduction to JetBrains tools. It was one of the best, probably still is, one of the best IDEs for doing complex web projects. Uh, both of them are having this new free non-commercial version. So uh, earlier this year, they released Rust Rover and Aqua, making them free for non-commercial use. They're now extending this model out to WebStorm and Rider. Uh, if you're using these IDEs for non-commercial purposes, such as learning, open source project development, content creation, or hobby development, you can now do so for free. Uh, if you're using commercial, if you're basically selling a product or using them at a, a corporation to make internal tools, that kind of stuff, you still need to use the existing licensing. So why are they doing this? Um, I think it's twofold. So first off, uh, community editions are getting harder and harder to make because basically you have to pare down the, the tools that are available and then upsell people to go to the commercial version. That's the model they use with IntelliJ, for example. It doesn't really work with a tool like Rider and so on. So basically they want to make it so that you can start learning or using it or so on, uh, but not necessarily have to create two different versions of it. Now, I think they should have had a free version all along. It's a no-brainer to get people to try out your product. I think every product should have a non-commercial version. It just gets more exposure to more people. Uh, so why did they 
pick WebStorm and Rider. While 68% of developers code outside of work as a hobby and nearly 40% of professional growth or self-paced learning, uh, this share is even higher for game development and web development. For example, game developers often begin their careers by creating games as a hobby using free game engines. This inspired our choice to apply the new licensing model to WebStorm and Rider. So you now have the new deal in place. So you've got the existing licensing model, commercial one, and then the new non-commercial use. Um, so commercial products are products distributed or made available for a fee or used as part of your business activity. However, there are certain categories in excluded explicitly from this definition. Common examples are uh, non -commercial, of non-commercial cases include learning and self-education, any form of content creation, open source code, and hobby development. Uh, and we actually have an example of exactly what this means down here. Functionally, by the way, the feature sets are the same, except for the Code With Me feature. You get Code With Me community with your free license. Also, of course, there's that telemetry gotcha in there as well. So if you're rabidly anti-telemetry, this isn't the product for you. Um, so where did I go? Here's my example here. Can I use the IDE for free to create educational courses and stream content while earning money through course sales or advertisements in the stream? So that's like myself. Uh, most non-commercial licenses don't really apply to me because I technically show product on screen. You guys watch the video. I make ad revenue. Can't use it. This explicitly allows me to use it. So with non-commercial license agreement, you can create any type of content, even if it involves receiving commercial benefit. Here are some examples of such content creation. Creators of educational courses looking to sell their courses, content creators who share posts on platforms like YouTube and earn commissions from ads, and podcasters and streamers who sell ad space in their content which honestly is a bit of a no-brainer for them to advertise because it's sort of like free advertisement for them when people actually use their products. Uh, but it also, again, if you're working on an open source project, so let's say you're contributing to the Godot project, or even if you're contributing to a commercial project like um, Unreal Engine, but you're not getting paid to do so, you could use Rider for that commercially. Also, again, if you're developing a game and you're not selling it yet, you can use Rider. And then once you start selling your game, you would have to upgrade to a commercial license. So it opens it up to a whole bunch more people. You get some details of what the telemetry is there. You cannot opt out of that. It is um, anonymized and, and does actually apply. The, their privacy policies are in effect for it, uh, but do be sure to read that stuff if you're interested. Some details of how you go ahead and redeem it. And yeah, now one thing that you're gonna wanna know about here, this applies to Rider 2024.2.7. Uh, so if you go here to, um, JetBrains Rider, you're going to notice I'm running 2024.2.6. 20, uh, 20, 20, 20, Come on in here, check it out, check for an update like so, and you will immediately find there is a new update. It is the 2024.2.7 version. I think the only thing really in this new upgrade or update is this free version. So you're going to come up with, you're going to need to use this newest version if you want to go ahead and check out Rider. So you like the free version of it. So you're going to need to get the newest version, but uh, if you've already got it installed, it is a straightforward upgrade process. Special thanks to Camtasia for sponsoring this video and being the tool I use to create it. You can see the process in the background right now. This is literally this video, at least the beginning of this video, being made slightly sped up. But you can see how easy it is for me to do add graphics, add animations, add annotations to my videos. I don't make the world's most advanced videos, but I make a lot of them. And this is a tool that makes it easy for me to do it. So if you want to go ahead and check out Camtasia, do use the link down below. Uh, you can use uh, the code Game from Scratch at checkout to get 15% off. There's also a fully functioning trial available. So thank you Camtasia for the sponsorship. Hopefully you guys will check that out, links down below. So that's it ladies and gentlemen, there is now a free, more accessible version of both Rider as well as WebStorm IDEs from JetGrain. Have you been meaning to check these ones out? I would highly recommend you do so. They're available Windows, Mac, and Linux. Great products in my humble opinion. Not gonna be for everyone, but the good news is you can check them out for free now. So what do you think of the new free versions? Let me know, comments down below. I'll talk to you all later, goodbye.